to be here. Thank you very much. Um, so I'd like to get started with the early days. Take us back to your Yale tenure. What did you do when you came here, and what was your experience like? Yeah, I graduated Yale in 2004, and um, it's just such a different world. I didn't have a computer for my first year of college. I didn't learn from my second year of college. Just go to Connecticut Hall and learn my paper. And there was no Facebook. What I was never really even a tech person. What, what got me into tech was uh, after I graduated, so Ilan and Tom were both 2006. They were two years younger. So Ilan, his junior year, uh, got a blog on, on Blogspot. And he started to kind of get a cult following. So at that point, I was in law school, and I kind of made a blog imitating his blog. It was the wannabe version. His blog was called Actual God. So mine was called Beneficent Hollow. Mm. And that's how I started getting into internet stuff. Was I just realized what I've always wanted is just to be able to write and have everyone read it, and I don't even need to get paid. So when you were here at Yale, you had your sights set on completing your degree and then going somewhere else for your masters? That's what you were focused I on? I went to law school. You went to yeah. law school, and I, I just wanted to I just wanted to go to law school. As soon as I got that, taken care of, I was kind of checked out. I didn't really have any aspirations at that point. Okay. It's my first year of law school that like, I fell in love with the internet. I went, I, you know, I, I went to Stanford for law yeah. school, so I think that helped, just kind of being in the internet hotspot. But meanwhile, like, Tom and Alon were still in their senior year at Yale at that point, and then they'd started blogging. Ilan had blog groupies. You know, so I'm like, I want some blog groupies. I got to start so that's, that was what drew me into, that's the only reason anyone does anything, I think, is just to try to, try to meet, you know, meet guys or meet girls. So but you, you met them whilst you were at Yale, were they college buddies in, in a sense, did you stay in their college, or how, how did you meet the guys? I guess when we really started bonding, so Ilan and I became really good internet friends from, uh, from the blog, from the blogs, blogosphere, we would call it. Tom had a blog too, but his wasn't. He didn't have. He kind of had a shit blog. Uh, and then Tom, I'd never met either, because I guess um, at while he was in college, Tom was like a huge, huge nerd. So he would he would didn't have the courage to like come up to me. So he knew me. I, oh yeah, sorry. So uh, when we all really became friends was actually uh, after they graduated, they both got jobs in New York City, and that's right when I graduated from law school. So we were all just like kind of working professionals. Ilan was at Google, uh, Tom was at a hedge fund, I was at a law firm, it's like boring jobs. So we would hang out together just to kind of uh, escape the corporate monotony. So you found out the you all, all you guys had blogs, you were all in New York together. Where were they working? You were working at the law firm, where were they working at the time? Uh, Tom was at D. Shaw. That's where he learned to code. Okay. They basically taught him to be a product manager for financial software. And also that's right when Stack Overflow had started. Uh, I think like Tom was one of the earliest people to get on Stack Overflow, and he always says that's how he learned to code. Stack Overflow. Interesting because it's crazy how much Tom has in common with, uh, I should show him, not with this kid, maybe with this kid too. Okay. This is the guy who built Everpedia. Um, I'm in love with this kid. He's amazing. He's really the smartest person. And he's so similar to Tom. So both of them were philosophy majors in college. No CS, nothing like that. Uh, both of them completely learned coding from Stack Overflow. And then like this kid, like Tom is his hero. You know, he just graduated from UCLA. So I kind of feel like I've traded in for like the younger, hotter version of my ex, you know? I've got this new kid. Yeah, he's my nickname for him is Persian Zuck. But really he's kind of he's basically Persian Zuck. <laughs> okay, so so genius didn't begin or rap genius didn't begin until two thousand and nine when all you guys were in New York. Tell me, you know, how how you found it. 
Yeah, so it's a pretty crazy story. Um, I, uh, the firm I was working for said that they would give us a third of our salary to go intern for one of their clients. And that was like considered a really sweet deal because all the other law firms were just laying everybody off. Uh, so I took it and I signed up to uh, intern for Warren Buffett in Omaha, Nebraska. Um, and I sublet my New York apartment uh, a couple weeks early. So I was living on Tom and Alon's floor. And then the day before I was supposed to go to Omaha, uh, the GC of National Indemnity, which is like the core business of Berkshire Hathaway, calls me, this lady Nancy Peters, and she goes, uh, Mabu, are you the beneficent Allah? <laughs> and I'm like, uh, yeah. So they had found my blog in the Google search. And this is a long time ago. Back then, I didn't even think people Google search people's names. So I never even, I don't think I'd ever Google searched my own name. So they found my blog and they decided that based on my blog, which is really just like poetry and stuff like that, they didn't like it. Some of the stuff talked about my law firm. So they said, you can't come to Omaha. They told my firm they have to get rid of me. And I was just kind of fucked. So I thought I was going to Omaha the next day. So I ended up staying on their couch a couple weeks longer just to figure out what I'm going to do. And then that night, the night after I got the call, I was listening to rap with Tom. And he asked me what a line means. And I told him what it means. And the, I actually gave him an incorrect answer. This was the line. Uh, I actually gave him kind of a prejudice answer. It's very nice. But that's what inspired him to make the site. So he heard this line. He had no idea what it meant. I told him what he's saying is that Jamaicans wear tattered clothing because they're poor. Mm. So when you get shot up, you look like a Jamaican. Actually, what it means, I was being prejudiced. Uh, actually, what it's talking about is these mesh tank tops that are very popular in Jamaica. So he's saying, uh, I'm going to shoot you up. So that's, the, that's what inspired him. He stayed up that night. He stayed up the whole night, built the first version of the site. So for those that don't know, uh, in, in the audience, just give us a lowdown on, on what Rapture is or was. Um, you know, <coughs> Well, so originally Rap Genius is to tell you the meaning of rap lyrics, mm -hmm. but what that kind of evolved into is um, a way to just annotate things on the internet, to have discussions, close readings. Like this is the, the true realization of genius. I guess they call it web annotator now, where you can just go to anything. Like I can go to just this random article on Vice. Is that a plugin? Yeah, yeah. It's either a plug. I have the plugin, but if you you don't have to have a plugin to do it. You could just write genius.com in front of any URL, and it takes oh. you to the Geniusify version of any page. Okay. And then you can annotate it right there. Um, and those annotations get voted up and down based on yeah. yeah. How good they are. Yeah. Like let's see. Let's see if there are any annotations on this article. Guess not. Um, okay. But, well, I should find something that has an annotation. Uh, this, isn't, this isn't a good example, but I'm an Alexa addict. I don't know about you guys, so I'm always <laughs> checking the Alexas. Okay. So, Woohoo, top 500. It's got a lot of them. It's not a good annotation. Whatever. Tommy. Okay. Uh, so it's it's kind of funny. So it's like you know going from telling the meaning of rap lyrics to close reading of the entire internet, mm. and then again Everpedia is kind of a close corollary. So the way Everpedia started was uh, Sam and Teddy, my other co-founder, uh, they just wanted a way to stalk pretty girls at UCLA. They had gotten some girl's Facebook and they wanted her Instagram. So they were like, wouldn't it be cool if you could just go to one site that has everything about it? And now it's going from that to just trying to encapsulate and contain all of human knowledge. So. so you were showing me before how to add someone's Facebook profile to Everypedia. But how do those links underneath get there? Is that from other people that have... Just click add them. Okay. Yeah, 
you do, it doesn't even have to be a link. You but can also, can. you can add photos and videos and whatever. Any information you want to add about somebody. <coughs> the only rule is you can't say anything. It's a positive user. <coughs> Everything has got to be nice. And if it's negative, you can remove it? If it's negative, you'll be banned from the site. Yeah, you're pretty intense about it. I guess it, it relaxes if people are famous. Like, my page is... <laughs> my page is not that terrible, but it's because I'm kind of famous. I'm, I'm a, like a B celebrity. So. But even mine, it's, it's way, I mean, it's, it's not nearly as mean as if you Google me. If you Google me, the first thing that shows up, it's really fucked up that in America we have no choice but to be Google. You know, at least in Europe, if you're willing to deal with some bureaucracy, you can get rid of it. First thing that shows up isn't even true. Like this really pisses me off because the lady who wrote this, Kara Swisher, you know, she's very powerful. I hate her. Uh, she wrote this. She just pulled it out of her ass. I resigned. I didn't, you know, I don't know what, why it really just bothers me because I have no control over it. And it wins my Google. You know, my Everpedia is like, it's, it's okay. there too. It's down. So, so I guess. Sorry. We can find this now on my Everpedia. Where is it? Fire. So what's cool is at least on my Everpedia, I can go on there and say this is bullshit. You know, I left this comment. I actually resigned, but Kara Swisher is a booger, so she lied. <laughs> I was gonna say I want to bring it back a bit to when you guys applied for, for like, uh, Y Combinator. Yeah. You know, a lot, a lot of people in the room probably are starting a company and they're thinking of incubators and whatnot. Uh, kind of tell me why you guys decided to apply and, and how you got in the door. So I didn't have a job. I was unemployed and desperate. Um, I'd failed the bar, uh, the California bar. So um, Rap Genius was kind of my only hope. Uh, Tom was still working full time uh, at the hedge fund. Alon was full time at Google. We applied to Y Combinator and we got rejected. And that is what really strengthened our resolve. That's when Tom started working only one day a week at the hedge fund. Uh, Elon quit Google and became a hypnotist. I decided I'm not going to take the bar again. We decided, you know, screw them. If they're not going to have us, we're going to turn this into some kind of cash flow positive thing. Um, we're like, we're never going to apply to Y Combinator again. Screw them. And then Justin Can, who was my class at Yale, he started Justin TV and Twitch and Social Camp wrote a blog post about Rap Genius. He's like, hey, I found this site, Rap Eggs of Jesus. It's really cool. So I was living in Berkeley at the time. I emailed him. He said, come to SF, visit our office. I went and visited him. And he said, you guys need to apply to Y Combinator. I told him, we applied, we got rejected. We decided that's bullshit, it's not for us. He said, no, apply again. So we applied again and we got in. So I think that he somehow like worked his Illuminati magic to get us in. So he denies it. He says, yeah. He's a partner there now. Now he's a partner. Yeah. He's been in, he's done YC himself like, I think like First 50, class. 50 times. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> he did it for exact. Okay. So what was the experience like? Well, I'd say the main learning point is getting FaceTime with the YC insider is the way to get into YC. Mm -hmm. That was the biggest value. You had already created the back end of the company. Yeah. You know, you developed the product. Did they assist with that? Did they assist with bettering your product? No, you know, the, the thing that Tom would always bring up, so one time we met with Paul Graham, we were having office hours with Paul Graham, and we told him, uh, you know, we were deciding, are we going to keep it as rap genius, or are we going to make it genius, genius, you know, are we going to make it rock genius, and poetry genius, and Bible genius, and Paul Graham's idea was for us to change the name of the site to definator.com. Which we thought sounds a lot like defecator. Right? Yeah. <laughs> so that's kind of Tom's example he would give of like how experts don't know anything, no one can help you. Okay. Well, look, uh, aside from that, you got in front of the right people, and at the end of your three months. I didn't learn anything at Yale either. The only thing I really learned at Yale was just like how to roll the perfect joint. Uh, but, so I think Y Combinator is kind of like that. Kind of like going to an elite school or something like that, and, and that helps. You know, like I would, I would want my kids to go to fancy schools. Uh, I would want my kids to do YC. I would, I would want if the if I see a promising startup, the first advice I give is do YC. Okay. Plus, it's 
it's not, a lot of people disobey the rules and they live in SF, but the official rules are you're supposed to live in Silicon Valley. They even say you're supposed to live in Mountain View. We live, we live in Palo Alto, uh, so that we can go to the Stanford gym. But it's just nice to be out in the middle of nowhere like that. This is literally nowhere. Yeah, it's, it's not a place, you're not in the city, you know, it's not like we were having fun. For three months, we didn't, we didn't have any fun. You're talking about the social scene. Yeah, yeah, we weren't social. Also, it was, it was the summer, so it's not even like schools in sessions. Okay. Um, All we were doing was, you know, working on the site. And but you raised money as soon as you finished, right? Why see? And how did that work out? How much did you raise? Who did you raise? Well, it was all about getting the Ashton Kutcher money. That was the coveted. So we were the last people to present out of 65 companies at YC. And Ashton actually got up and left. Uh, Ashton and Demi Moore. This was right before they got to this. They got up and left right before we presented. So we were like, no. And Ilan ran after Ashton. <laughs> Tom went on stage and presented. Uh, Ilan ended up talking to Ashton's uh, Ashton's little helper, um, Chris Hall, uh, and then they were talking about rap genius uh, when this boy, who's an R and B singer, who Ashton uh, mentored, texted him a rap genius link, mm -hmm. saying, "Look, Lil Wayne talks about you in his new song." And then Ashton said that that was like a sign from the Kabbalah that he was saying that. So like while they're talking about rap genius, someone sends him a rap genius thing. Okay. So you get this like positive affirmation, you get some money from you know, Ashton, you know, some celebrity. And I guess, you know, what happened after? You know, how did you use that cash? What was your, you know, what was your um, influence? You know, you tried to build a company, social media was a big play in raising awareness. Kind of tell me what happened after. Yeah, who knows what even helped? You know, like sometimes you think of the celebrity investors, like, did Ashton really do anything valuable? Like, I can't really point to anything he did that was super valuable. Maybe it's just the confidence that it gives. Um, even the social media, I have no, I have no idea how big of a role it played. Like, obviously, I want to pretend that the company <laughs> got huge because of the social media. But. but you were reaching out to like a lot of rappers and whatnot, right? Yeah, I'd say the biggest lesson, though, which again, we're, you know, that's that. This is one reason why I got on board with Everpedia. Like, I wasn't planning on working anymore. I wasn't planning on getting involved. But one thing that's cool about Everpedia is that it's it relies on Google search. And the real way the rap genes blew up was just the Google searches for lyrics. So mm -hmm. I don't think anything can just get you huge, massive traffic unless there's some kind of Google search that you're targeting and winning. So for Everpedia, we're trying to do that with people's names. Okay. Like, you know, if you Google search my name, my Everpedia comes up before my Facebook. Oh. Um, <clears throat> um, okay, so the company's kind of rolling now, and, and uh, tell me about the company culture. What was it like, three guys working together? You know, what did you do every day? It evolved. It evolved over time. I think the biggest change was right after we raised the forty million dollars in 2012? 2014. 2014. Yeah, right before I left the company. That's also when, even before I left, I'd switched to part time status because I didn't. I, I was there for about a month of when it had become like a real corporate thing, mm -hmm. and I didn't like it very much at all. Everyone was doing one on ones. That's all you hear about. It tech management, one-on-ones. Who do you have your one-on-one with today? It just seemed to me kind of pointless. Like, I don't understand. Everyone's just like sitting around and talking instead of just working on the site. Mm -hmm. And I wonder what they do at Genius now. It seems like they're just doing a lot of one-on-ones. I think so. I think the, the, the other founders are pretty quiet now, too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what about your interactions with famous hip-hop celebrities? Can you tell us a couple stories? That say? was, I mean, you know, that was really fun for me, but I wouldn't say that it was very helpful to the site. Because, like, I would meet the hip-hop guy, and it's like, hey, I love you, and they're like, uh, get away from me, bro. <laughs> so then very early on, we hired this girl, Nicole, uh, and she was at least 
able to play the role of like, like, hey, you know, I'm a young girl, talk to me. And she got, she made a little bit more inroads of getting the rappers to annotate their own stuff. And then she ended up leaving the company right when it got corporate, uh, three months before I left. Okay. She didn't want to deal with corporate bullshit. But then the guy who they just hired, let me see if I can remember. This is the big, big revolution is about six months ago, they hired this guy, who's one of the people who started, you know, he was an original writer for The Source and MTV's Rap Fix. He knows every rapper on a first name basis. So now, they have two or three huge rappers a week coming in and uh, annotating their own lyrics. And Eminem invested Eminem. in the site. Last month, right? Yeah, yeah a couple months ago. Uh, Did you meet Eminem? No. He's locked up. I met his manager. I remember when we were talking to his manager, and his manager said, Eminem doesn't even use the internet. <laughs> but well, the only thing he likes to do is just go on Rap Genius and read his fans' annotations. And then he got really into annotating his own shit. Like, most of the famous people do not have 41,000 IQ. <laughs> he really went crazy on the set, so it's cool to see. He, oh, also what's cool about Eminem is he, I mean, he, sometimes he'll annotate the beats and stuff, but a lot of times he actually annotates the line, you know, he uses wow. it for close reading. Whereas like Hillary Clinton, I love Hillary Clinton, she didn't 100% understand the site, you know, like she, <laughs> God bless you, you know, she says God bless you, and then she's just putting a thing for the speech. <laughs> but she's verified, wow. Yeah, so I, I think what Hillary Clinton wanted was she wanted Everpedia beta. You know, like, you know, we can go to one of her speeches uh, here, and she could have just gone and commented on her speech. You know, you got the speech right here, you can see it right here, and then she just wants to comment on the speech, and people know, so you know, I commented here, I'm like, you know, she's an intellectual. I compare her to Marcus Red. So that's why my, my nickname, sometimes, you know, my, the Everpedia guys went to UCLA, so sometimes I have to make fun of them. Uh, so my nickname for Everpedia is Dumb Genius. But that's actually a compliment, because, you know, that's what the world needs, is a dumb version of Rap Genius. Rap Genius got too intellectual with, like, everything has to be close reading. So this is just global commentary on the whole internet. So, you know, I know you're not afraid to speak your mind and have a laugh, that's yeah. good fun, but it's kind of landed you in some hot water, you know, up yeah. until you kind of departed the company last year. Do you yeah. want to talk about some of those things that happened? Yeah, well, so I'd say the big three are, one was the Mark Zuckerberg can suck my dick, which I never even said. That was like taken out of context. And that really hurts my feelings because, that's the one that hurts my feelings the most because I love Mark Zuckerberg. I love, 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 love this man. Um, and you know, I also, I was friends with him before the whole thing. This is my favorite um, convo I ever had. He was a big fan of Rap Genius. Um, he's even got a verified account on Rap Genius, but he hasn't used it yet. That's pretty cool though, if you can tell one of the richest men in the world to suck your dick and he still uses your website. <laughs> <laughs> But I shouldn't have done it. And I didn't say it. If you actually would have read what I said in the interview, it was taken out of context. I was kind of making fun. At first, I was like saying, like, you know, he went to Harvard trying to like make it like rap beef, like as if like, you know, Tupac and Big. Uh, but I was, I was just joking. And then at the end of the interview, I said, like, all right, let's recap what I've told you. I've told you Mark Zuckerberg can suck my dick. I don't know why I'm being so negative. You know, I kind of said it as like making fun of it. But then the media got yeah. carried away with it. Um, and then the second big thing was, I read, where did it go? I read Elliot Rogers' uh, manifesto. Serial uh, killer. Yeah, the guy who killed a bunch of kids at UC Santa Barbara. And I was like, this is an amazing uh, piece of writing. This needs to be annotated. Uh, I was also horrified by the crime. You know, I had like a lot of friends who'd gone to UC Santa Barbara. I grew up in the San Fernando Valley, which is where the killer had grown up. He went to a bunch of the high schools that all my friends had gone to, so like it really hit close enough. So I was gonna do like a crazy job of annotating the whole thing. 
but this is when I just started my chill part-time role at Rap Genius and I was going to the beach every day. I'd gotten really, really into bodyboarding. So I just made a couple of sketches in the morning and then I went to the beach. And I come back from the beach and Gawker reporter is like, did you annotate Elliot Rogers' manifesto? And in one of the annotations I had said, uh, he's, he's hearing his sister have sex and it's upsetting him. Like, I've never had sex, but my sister's having sex. Mm -hmm. So as the annotation I wrote, I bet his sister's really hot. And everyone got mad at me for that. Um, but meanwhile, his sister really is very hot. <laughs> uh, this is her every okay. So I don't really understand, but I guess at that point, at that point I've been getting into trouble. So I, I said I'll, I'll resign from and then I was, so when I resigned, I was, I, I wrote a book, like the first thing I did when I uh, resigned was a book, PDFs, right? I wrote this book. Is this published? No. 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 Well, yeah, like this is, this isn't what I thought of. Um, that, well, I'm sorry, well that's, that's actually my book that I self-published, but I also wrote a book called Geniusing, mm -hmm. about starting that genius, I never found a publisher. Okay. So then I was looking for freelance publishing stuff to do, I was freelance writing for the New York Observer for Thought Catalog, which is a pretty cool thought. The cool thing about Thought Catalog is they don't even edit your posts. They just let, let you post whatever you want. Uh, and if you're getting paid, they pay you. Uh, so I've been writing a bunch of stuff about Whole Foods for them. Like, let's see if this comes up. Literally every, I would only eat at Whole Foods at the time. So. I wrote all of these articles. Uh, top 10 failed Whole Foods pickup lines. Review of every Whole Foods in Los Angeles. So I wrote this one, How to Steal from Whole Foods. <laughs> and everyone went crazy. These stupid VCs flipped out. Um, by the way, if you ever want to read, so I had to take it down because they said if I don't get it taken down, they'll ban me from Whole Foods. The CEO of Whole Foods actually <laughs> called me. Uh, so it had to be taken down. Uh, and then I had to fight Thought Catalog. Thought Catalog's like, no, we can't take them down, First Amendment. And I'm like, I can't be banned from Whole Foods, motherfucker. <laughs> Which is funny, because I don't even go to Whole Foods anymore. There's this place, Sprouts, that opened up in LA. It's like discount Whole Foods. Um, but if you ever want to read it, it's on, it's on my ever people. The internet never forgets. Where is it? Where is, where is the that directly? Internet. So the top voted thing is the actual article, <laughs> which is taken down. But the archive. You guys know about archive.org? It's called the Wayback Machine. If you go to archive.org, you can paste in any link on the internet, and it tells you what used to be there. So it's up there. So here you can read it. And this is kind of where I drew the last straw. I was like, all right, I don't have no problem getting in trouble for the Elliot Roger thing because I hadn't written anything of value. I'd written like his sister's hot. And that was, you know, I was stupid to put that out there. But this I'd actually written like a really funny, brilliant thing. And these idiots were giving me a hard time about it. So that's just where I like, this is when I decided like, fuck you capitalism. Like, I'm not playing your game. Like if you read it, there's a lot of good jokes in um, I'd, I'd say the best practice is to buy a pound and eat a pound. This is about stealing from the salad bar. As the rapper Drake famously said, buy a pound, eat a pound, that's the motto of huh? YOLO. Okay. Yeah. Um, so you had this controversy and then you, know, you, you, left, you left Genius um, what, 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 aimlessly floating around, looking for something to do. No, not really. I, well, I was giving a talk at UCLA, and Sam came up to me, and he showed me... Co-founder. Yeah. He showed me my Everpedia page, and my heart just kind of skipped a beat, because this was my number one thing in life, was I wanted a Wikipedia page. Mm -hmm. And I had paid people to put one up for me. I tried to do it myself. I tried everything to get... And then this is what's really annoying. If you Google genius... Oh, sorry. Not that genius. So, my name is linked. Let me see Resignation. Wait. Oh, they took the links off. 
you're like, I don't know, I'm all over the place. <laughs> Just seems like I should have a Wikipedia page, goddamn. Yeah, he told me, he's like, I made your ever page. And suddenly I was like, this is what I've got to do. I started putting a ton of stuff up on the site. You get IQ for putting stuff up on the site. And uh, the plan is, the IQ is going to be tradable for equity in the company. Reddit wanted to do this, but then they backed away from it. Reddit, Reddit calls it karma. They were going to make it so you can trade uh, karma for shares in the company. But then they backed out. So our plan is, like, we're going to publicize in Reddit. Like, we're going to do what Reddit promised you. Didn't. So hopefully we can get a lot of people to defect from Reddit. So this is me, I got the second highest, second highest IQ on the site. So tell us your, your kind of future projections of what you, where you want to go with Wikipedia. You know, you showed us how it works. So what's the kind of ultimate goal? So Wikipedia has five million pages, which might seem like a lot, but if you think about it, it's not a lot. Facebook has billions of pages. Uh, Wikipedia has deleted more pages than they've kept. Like they've deleted my page four or five times. Um, there's a site called Deletionpedia, which has all of the deleted Wikipedia pages. It's bigger than Wikipedia. So the idea is for Everpedia to have billions of pages, just like Facebook. Um, so what, what do you give? Um, what kind of advice would you give entrepreneurs after going through you know everything you've been through? Um, there's no such thing as like I have an idea. The stupidest thing you can well, no, the stupidest thing you can say is uh, sign this NDA. It's like the official stupidest. But the second stupidest thing you can say is I have this idea. I need someone to build it. Like there's no such thing as someone building your idea. You have to build your own idea. Uh, even if you get someone else to build your idea, it's going to suck because it wasn't their idea. And like I've never built anything in my life, right? So how come I get to do fun stuff? It's because I work on other people's ideas. Uh, Rap Genius was 100% Tom's idea, and Everpedia was 100% Sam's idea. So either be the engineer or kiss the engineer's ass. Okay. There. <laughs> that is all you know and all you need to know. All right. Well, we'll, uh, we'll open it up for question and answers. You know, if anyone has a question. Raise your hand. No? Yep. Yeah. So is uh, Everpedia just for people, or can you put other companies, places? Yeah, well, when I, when I pitch it, it seems kind of like Peoplepedia, right? And the one reason we're so excited about people is because of the Google search hack. It's the same reason Rap Genius was excited about rap lyrics. It's a way to get traffic from the Google searches. But no, so another thing we're targeting. You know, eventually, so this uh, plastic surgeon invested. He's one of our earliest angel investors. So like Blafaro Plasties up here. Yeah, it's <coughs> eyelid and plastic surgeon. So it's for everything. But the things we're targeting are people and startups. Because like startups want to be on Wikipedia, but they can't be. So like, you know, Tinder's on here. Tinder's already on Wikipedia too. So for them, it's not a big deal. But this is how we're going to try to make money. Next month, we're rolling out ads. The ads are going to be a see also section. This is done manually. The ads are going to make it look sexy. But like Bumble's not on Wikipedia yet, but Bumble's on Everpedia. So I'm hoping Whitney is the girl who started Bumble. I love her. I'm a big fan. She got she left Tinder. Um, I'm hoping they'll pay us money to put them on the see also page for Tinder. Hmm steal some Tinder. Or hell, you know, if they pay us enough, we'll put them everywhere. Every, every page right. you look up, we'll be like, also, check out Bumble. <laughs> Anyone else? No? Yes. yes. Um, so I have my own blog that I'm trying to do um, while also working full time. Um, can you give any advice as to kind of like keep that going, like that initiative going, even kind of when you're working on other things? Um, do you have any traffic? Yeah, well, I, I had a lot, um, and then I kind of started my job, and I kind of got put on the back burner, how and like, how do you, um, well, my analytics got all messed up. I had, when, when I first got my analytics, I had about 5,000 in, like, I want to say, eight weeks. Nice. And then now, it's kind of, I haven't been doing it that much. Let's take a look. It's called look. From Beginning to Trend.com. So how, how do you keep it going? 
that's the question. Well, first things first, let's check out the Alexa rank. You guys should all download the Alexa toolbar, by the way. Alexa. Yeah. It's just, if you Google search Alexa toolbar, you can get it, and it tells you. So yeah, you need, you gotta get some traffic. So far, it's, it's not, and I mean, it's tough. It's tough, it's good to have, though. Um, so if you want. Yeah, how do you, would you like, suggest to get traffic? Like, what are the good platforms, you think? Well, I'll tell you what. If you're down to do an interview with me, I can post it on my Facebook and Twitter. I'll okay. use some traffic that way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, uh, trying to win Google searches, it's tough. I guess traffic isn't everything. That's more just if you want to, I think the main reason why it's good to have a blog is because that's that becomes kind of the beginning of your presence on the internet. You know, everyone has. I still got my blog. I still even am writing on it. I just wrote about how uh, Alexis Ohanian is going to get popped for being Serena Williams. <laughs> My blog doesn't have much traffic either. Is this anonymous, or does it have your, does it have your name into it? Um, it's. I mean, I'm. I think if you Google my name, it comes up somewhere. But at okay. this point, I've done so many bad things. Those all over Google search. Okay, so, down the rank. Yeah. This was Alon's blog. I took it off the internet. Or no, oh, look, for a while it was gone, but now I guess, I guess like, probably like one night, like he was drunk and he was emotional, so he brought it back, like, just so he could read his own post. Anyone else? All right. Put your hands together for my vote.